five meters every year. And that means that there are now 4,000 villages in China in danger of being swallowed up by the sands. Very bad for our land. The summers are too hot now, and in the winter the sandstorms come. It makes life very hard. Picturesque lake and forest represent the front line against expanding desert in northern Xinjiang. You may know the Great Wall of China, but do you know anything about the deserts of East Asia's most extensive land? The deserts of China include the Gobi Desert, Taklamakan Desert, Gerbantingu Desert, Tenga Desert, Ulambu Desert, Muas Desert, Hun Shandik Desert, and others. China is now building a new wall. Nonetheless, this wall will be separate from China's Great Wall. It will be intended to use China's dry terrain to the residents' benefit. China's objective is to convert the Gobi Desert into a forest. However, the deserts of China are growing and presenting a hazard, but the country is rising to the occasion by reversing the decertification process. How is China converting its deserts into agricultural land? Why are other nations following this? Let's see how China is turning its deserts into green forests. Northern China and Southern Mongolia share a border with the Gobi Desert, the world's fifth biggest desert. It encompasses well over 500,000 square miles. It's situated in Asia's most remote terrain, covering 1,200 kilometers east-northeast of China's Chan Shan, or Celestial Mountains. The mountain range extends into China's Manchurian province. The Gobi is about the same latitude as Central Europe and the northern United States. Its basins vary in elevation from 1,600 to 5,000 feet above sea level. The Himalayan and associated peaks are to account for their placement in the rain shadow of the region's dry climate, intercepting moisture-laden clouds before they reach much of the Gobi. Gobi means large and arid in Mongolian. According to the United Nations assessment, the dry zones, which include vast swaths of desert, encompass 41.3% of the Earth's total surface area. This suggests that more than half of the Earth's surface is less suitable for agricultural cultivation than a mighty nation. China grew worried about their desert's expanding issue in the 1970s, and they launched an effort to control the desert. By the second decade of the 2000s, they'd have effectively pushed the deserts back, increasing the quantity of agriculture. Consider China a nation with a population of 1.3 billion and a geographical area of 3.5 million square miles. China needs to meet both of these requirements. However, it's noteworthy to remember that just 12% of the land is cultivable. Despite this, China is responsible for feeding 22% of the world's population utilizing just that territory. That is quite an accomplishment. Nonetheless, one issue has given the Chinese authorities reason to worry. The rapid decertification of China's northern area remains a severe danger to the country and its people. The Gobi Desert is the driest area on Earth and the driest place on the planet that is rapidly spreading. The Gobi Desert has changed around 2,250 pastures into an inhospitable wasteland throughout this time frame. The Gobi Desert, an arid landscape that divides China and Mongolia, spans about 500,000 kilometers across northern China and southern Mongolia. At least since the 1950s, there has been a presence of consciousness inside the government. China has been fighting decertification for a long time. As one of the world's most industrialized nations, its governments couldn't simply sit back and let their prized farmlands turn into deserts. They took measures to address this issue. It was in the 1970s that the government concentrated mainly on decertifying its pertinacious lands and began taking significant steps to address this problem. Before that point, action still needed to be taken to address the issue. In 1978, the Chinese government launched a countrywide effort at ecological engineering with the Three North Shelter Belt Project. The Great Green Wall is another moniker for this project that is occasionally used. This initiative aims to halt the growth of the vast Gobi Desert and initiate forestry operations. Along the 3,200-mile border separating northern China and Mongolia in the Three North Shelter Boat Projects, Chinese scientists working for the Ministry of Forestry believe the trees can function as a windbreak and prevent desert expansion. The massive Green Wall project is expected to last until 2050. Its ultimate objective is to plant around 88 million acres of forest in the shape of a wall that will reach approximately 3,000 miles and be as extensive as 900 miles in specific locations. In recent years, the government has sponsored and expanded numerous massive reforestation programs, resulting in the most significant tree planting effort in human history during the previous several decades. Over 66 billion trees have been planted in northern China, according to the Chinese government. So far, the results have been positive. 
with thousands of acres of shifting dunes stabilized and the frequency of sandstorms throughout the nation decreasing by one-fifth between 2009 and 2014. Windbreak trees have covered more than 7.8 million hectares during the last four decades. According to research by the Chinese Academy of Sciences, decertification has been reversed in 336,200 square kilometers. Over the previous four decades, over 10 million hectares of grasslands have been conserved or restored. This effort has increased overall forest coverage to about a quarter of China's territory from less than 10% in 1949. Around the year 2000, the country's deserts were expanding by 10,400 square kilometers every year. According to the GSA, this effort has increased overall forest coverage. A further crucial step was transforming the Maowusu Desert into a lush forest in the Inner Mongolian area of northern China. At the end of 2020, 93.24% of the Maowusu Desert had been replanted with flora. The desert region formerly among China's four biggest have nearly vanished from the map. Approximately 27% of China was covered in the desert at the turn of the century. Despite this, the proportions has decreased as a direct consequence of several steps the government has taken recently. Other measures, such as passing legislation started in the early 2000s, have been taken by China to curb the spread of sweets throughout the country. Meanwhile, researchers are exploring ever-expanding avenues to find solutions allowing the whole project to go without a hitch in time for the National People's Congress in 2021. If everything goes according to plan, the leadership of China has committed to new aims to expand the total amount of land covered by force by 1% by the year 2025, increasing the total to 23. Even though the Great Green Law Project has excellent potential, it's still possible to overcome several obstacles. Researchers discovered that farmers in the southwestern region of China are tearing down natural flora to collect money for planting non-native plants as part of a government initiative. Additionally, there's an issue with water shortages in the area, which is a concern since the increased demand for water produced by planting so many trees has led to water shortages in the region. As part of the effort, non-native plants that needed water were brought into northern China. These trees were planted in sections of the area that get very little rain. Because of this, a vicious cycle is created in which the newly planted trees using the remaining water, ultimately leading to the extinction of both the freshly planted trees and the existing planted species in the area. Large portions of China, including those regions planted with trees, have a drier climate. According to research released in 2019, the number of places in China classified as semi-arid grew by 33 between 1948 and 1962. Research done in 2006 found that just 15% of the trees planted between 1978 and 2004 had survived between 1994 and 2008. The study was done in 2004. However, there is some encouraging news to report. The National Forestry Department has acknowledged the significance of tree planting initiatives in dry regions. As of late, the National Forestry Department and many municipal governments have redirected their attention toward planting shrubs that have reduced the need for watering. It has been brought to the knowledge of the director of the Forestry Department that the understanding that monoculture forests are not sustainable has led to the statement that efforts should be concentrated on preserving healthy vegetation rather than merely planting trees to build a greener future. Chinese environmental experts have been trying to guarantee that new woods have an even more amazing variety of plants and animal life. At the moment, the primary objective of planting programs is to cultivate forests that are better able to withstand disturbances by using planting patterns modeled after natural forests. However, since deserts play a significant role in controlling global temperature, effort must be made to counteract desertification. Their dryness promotes the concentration and development of valuable minerals, including potassium borate, gypsum nitrate, and others. If our planet's deserts vanished, the climate would most surely suffer, and the supply of numerous minerals would be compromised. And with this, we've come to the end of the video. What is your thought about desertification? Share your opinion in the comment section, and if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the bell notification. Take care.